All right, guys, how to go back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. And after an awful start to the season, it seems the Paris Legion may finally be taking action here in Call of Duty Vanguard. They've been getting roasted all over the shop as of late. They're making a significant change, it seems, to their roster. But will this actually be enough to send this team in the right direction? Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you are new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. Really upset the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that. First of all, nice little clip here from Gizmo on the Gravity Hardpoint. Not really seen anyone do this before, I guess something to watch out for in your rank play matches on this, um, well, on this particular hard point, you can fall off the map. It's, uh, well, a thing that you'd expect places to do. This time, not the case. Firstly, this from Crone. Rocker confirmed yesterday, finally, the, um, yes, the Major 2 tournament that is going to be going on in Minnesota actually is going on. We, um, we weren't sure if they actually were going to be hosting this Major, even though it was talked about, because I'm not sure they could find an appropriate venue at that time. They have now made it work, so I believe, obviously, the first Major here from March the 3rd through to the 6th is the Optic Major, then the Rocker 1 just after that at the end of March. So an incredibly packed month of Call of Duty we're going to have here in March. Because, um, I mean, we go from the Optic Major straight into the Major 2 qualifiers for three weeks and then straight into the Major 2 event after that. So March is going to be crazy. But, um, I mean, still, this event is going to go in Minnesota as planned. Also, I think the third Major is going to be in Toronto, the fourth one New York, at least as it is at the moment. But um, also, pretty big deal, Minnesota are also hosting a Challengers event alongside this tournament. That's really exciting. Of course, they brought on an Academy team recently, the Spanish guys that have been dominating the European side, but um, yeah, been a long time coming really since Challenger players have actually got the chance to get back to a LAN environment, so this is very exciting, looking forward to seeing how that one develops going forwards, and let's just dive into the current league standings though, because yes, if this isn't a competitive league, what is? But um, look, Paris Legion, they're still down here, 0-5, in 5-15 five, five in map count, and in fairness, they had a pretty good start to the season, right, in terms of okay, the kickoff classic, they didn't look completely terrible, I believe they played Los Angeles Thieves, then of course they come in their first game of the season, they play Atlanta FaZe, they go up 2-1 in that series, they eventually lose it 3-2 um, in the game five, but like, um, look, they showed some promise in those couple of series. Since then, it's been all downhill for them. They end up here 0 in 5 with um, really little hope, to be honest. And look, we thought last year, Paris Legion, when they came into the season with this roster, like, okay, what exactly are they playing at here? Doesn't seem like they have all that much intention to win, of course, because they're playing 50k salaries. They're picking up players on the latter end of their career. Like, what are they really thinking? Last off season, we thought they were just going to sell their entire spots. Maybe they're still planning to. I don't know. But still, look, it's early doors. Like, um, they've still got a chance to make a run. If they improve drastically, they can, of course, still make the World Championship right, they can get top 8 this season, they can try and do something this year and even if they do disappear or whatever happens in this upcoming off season, at least they might have some decent players on their team they can sell onto other rosters rather than those players just going into retirement. So we were hoping they would do something right because the frustration is that all the other 11 teams are very exciting and interesting and the Paris games, the last couple of games they've played, you just know it's a foregone conclusion before it even begins. So that's why I was like, okay, please at Paris at least try and do something. Now, well, the rumours that start to arrive yesterday as the flanks say, despite finding some success in challenges and being signed, Team Wars Challengers roster has parted ways with Gravity and Jimbo. What's going on here? Could they potentially be joining a CDL team? Paul X, Zapchius, Glow Frosty, and Venom, the new squad they've got. Of course, so you guys might think it's very familiar to the Western roster of last season with Paul X, Zap, Venom, and Gravity. We're now Glow Frosty there instead. And of course, Paul X, Zap, and Venom all got picked up at some point last year. Gravity has kind of been the odd man out in North American Challengers. Of course, the main assault rifle player. Very difficult to get picked up in that role because there's not all that many spots in the league. But um, I mean, still, he's been kind of the guy on so many teams throughout the last several years that has never really got his opportunity and other players around him have and that some of them have had success, some of them have squandered it. Like um, even the FaZe Clan Black team, I'm pretty sure, way back in the day in Black Ops 4, they won, I'm pretty sure, the Fort Worth Open in 2019. That team was Asim, Selium, Simp and Phantoms, I think. And of course, all those first three guys. Phantoms was on Paris Legion in year one of the CDL as well. And Gravity. This guy's been around a very long time. People have been hoping he's going to get a shot to at least prove himself. Now the opportunity seems to be arriving here on the Paris as Legion alongside Jimbo, a French-Canadian SMG player that has certainly shown some promise as well. The actual change they're making, though, is quite interesting. So Decimate is out of there on the SMG. Fellow seems to be out of there as well on the main AR. And then Gravity comes in for Fellow. Jimbo comes in for Decimate. So, well, interesting change, no doubt, just because of the players that are leaving. Because, look, certainly a change was warranted. Gravity, I think, is a nice pickup instead of Fellow. Jimbo, I think, we are worth giving him a go. Experience with Gravity as well. But, yeah, the two players out of there has certainly caused some discussion. I'm sure you guys will have your thoughts in the comments 
comment section below. But yes, Crone says the franchise had shown no signs of life so far this season. The stats obviously do not look pretty at all. We'll have a look at those in a second. But um, yeah, look, if they do go ahead with this roster change, that's the change it seems they will likely be making. But yeah, Jimbo is not guaranteed, actually, because I believe Crow goes on to say here in a second that um, it's possible they have another player lined up instead. You guys might remember Jimbo for this situation that happened last year. He said some words to Kismet that he shouldn't have said that were indicated as being threatening, and, uh, and he actually got suspended from Chandis for three months. But he was talking about, okay, he's French-Canadian, like English isn't his first language. He didn't say it quite as he wanted it to. But um, yeah, he, this is kind of the, the biggest drama he's been in so far. Hopefully he can kind of uh, overshadow this, right, with some good performances here for the Paris Legion if they do go through with this. But, um, well, as Crone actually says, as far as I'm aware, this move has not been locked in as of yet, and I'm told Paris Legion has another option that does not involve Gravity or Jimbo. So, um, actually, well, maybe both of these guys won't be there, right, and maybe two other guys are going to come in instead. So, that's the thing. There's plenty of options in the Chandra scene, and because they are moving pretty quickly here pretty early on in the season, they still have some chances. Last year, they made a couple of moves. I mean, Temp came into the team, of course, after he lost, left Los Angeles Thieves. Then they brought Zaptius in slightly later on. They did something last year. This year, they're being a little bit quicker on the draw, probably because this year they, they're just absolutely terrible it seems. But one of the questions has been, are the two players being removed actually the right two players to be removed? Because okay, Temp no-brainer keep him on the team. Yes, some might argue that in the last couple of series, he's played in such a way to make his stats look good, despite the team underperforming, which I mean, you know, you could argue, but at the same time, look, yes, yeah, so he does have at least have a 1kd here in hard points. Like, um, his engagements are much higher than the rest of the team as well, so it seems like he was doing a fair bit for this team, just on the eye test in general. But uh, yeah, as you can see, the matches so far, they haven't won a match yet this season. At this rate, they don't really look particularly likely to. But again, look at the stats in all the game modes. John, especially in the hard point, has been pretty woeful. I mean, a 0.78 KD in the hard points, like his engagement rate isn't particularly high as well. So um, yeah, the John question mark is quite interesting because like a fellow for gravity, like a fellow on the AR, like fellow is a 0.7 right now in search and destroy, like it's not great at all. The control KDs actually look okay because I guess they play a fair bit of Gara too, which they can set up shop on. But uh, yeah, fellow is the man he really hasn't been particularly well performing. So trading him out for gravity, I guess makes a fair bit of sense. The decimate question is quite interesting because often I kind of do look at the engagement right and say, okay, well, Decimate in Hardpoint does a 0.95 compared to John's 0.78, and he gets more engagements for 10 minutes. So, yes, John is a 2016 world champion, but um, this season really, like, I guess he had a couple of decent moments in Search and Destroy, but outside of that, John has looked pretty woeful. And, like, um, I just think that a lot of people would say that maybe you do make this change for Decimate, but John stays on the team just for now, but like maybe John has to go at some point in the future because um, the way the team is currently trending, like, uh, John isn't going to be here at the end of the year, right? So, it's like, okay, do we want to just cut him now or like do we think he can still improve because there was some talk last year when he went to Los Angeles Thieves that like um, he was really good in practice couldn't really convert that to the games do they want to give him more time are they going to try this new roster of four here at the major which we imagine is what they're planning to do and then if it doesn't work out make an additional change like I definitely treat your perspective on this one because you know fellow out Desio I don't mind but like I'm um, John keeping his spots some people are saying you know what's going on here and looking hard when they're one in ten like um, it's not ideal right now this also as Scump says there was some discussion about this that okay have He's been the guy absolutely killing it in changes. His intention was he decided not to stay on the Florida Mutineers bench so he could move to Texas and prove he's the guy to go to in the Chandra scene if you want to win. Now, um, well, Havoc might have an opportunity here. Who knows? That's what some have said. Gravity, Jimbo, and Havoc in all for those three players in addition to Temp. Like, maybe that's the way to go. Scump even says he's been peeping the gameplay what Havoc and the boys have been up to as of late, and he's pretty impressed with what he's seen. So definitely an opportunity there for Paris. Who knows what they're going to try and do? Of course, like, these guys in general don't don't like to spend all that much money. And look, we've seen that over the last couple of years. This year, maybe a similar opportunity as well. Shotzi also had some thoughts on Paris. This, of course, before the change was announced. But uh, well, the CDL did some video. They were kind of asking some players some what, what they called tough questions. And Shotzi's answer right to the end here was pretty funny, really. It was kind of talking, OK, who do you think is going to win the World Championship? This clip is also pretty ridiculous. I guess he's playing Lee play or something here. Gets the three piece, knows the fourth guy's going to be here, looks away from his screen, pre-fires, kills the guy, perfect timing. Like, uh, that's just sixth sense right there. Very impressive stuff. But um, I mean, yeah, he talks about the team that he thinks is going to win champs. Of course, generally, teams don't want to kind of jinx themselves by saying their own roster. That's certainly what Krimsik says. So, well, he basically says, look, Paris, because, well, he thinks they've got no chance of winning at all. So that wouldn't be a jinx for them because, I mean, look, who's going to lose to Paris at the World Championship? Because probably they're not even going to be there. Of course, look, with this roster change, maybe the tides will turn. Way too early prediction, champs winner. Hopefully ultra. Um, uh, but if it wasn't to pick us, go Optic. Well, I'm hoping the champs winner is us. It's Frickin' LA Thieves, all right? LA Thieves, 2022 CDL champions. Minnesota Rock, your baby. You gotta go with your own team. I got the Seattle Surge. Florida Mean News. Anyone answering this question, that's juju right there. That's bad juju. 
I'm not answering that one. See, this is a hard one because if I say myself, I don't want to get bad juju. And if I say another team, then it's like feeding them. So actually, you know what? Let's go with Paris. Paris is winning champs this year. <laughs> no comment. A few things to mention here as we finish out the video. Firstly, from CDL Scrim Intel, managed to capture some scrim results. Not sure how he managed this. From well, a scrim set that was actually played off stream. So maybe he got this from the coaching staff or whoever like reached out to him and got this stuff. But again, this was not played on stream, I believe. We do apparently have some results from this scrim set. Surge versus New York. I believe when New York initially picked up royalty, they played Surge in the scrim and beat them 7-0. to zero. And that's why maybe kick started the idea of, okay, royalty is the go-to guy. We've got to keep him in the team. They played them last night, 3-3 three to three it seems. They actually won not just one, but two hard points. They lost the Bacaj 252-48. They won the Gamatu by 60 point clubbing them apparently. And then they won the Tuscan as well. So, you know, look, fair play to New York. Subliners splitting the controls. Like, okay, look, Surge haven't looked great as of late, but um, they're trying to get back into business. And of course, like, if New York are looking better and improving to some degree in their practice, hopefully that's going to translate for them in the matches. Because again, like, we want Paris to be competitive. We want the league to be as competitive and as interesting as possible. We don't want um, a team like Paris to just be a write-off when they play a series, kind of like Los Angeles Grillers were last year and Seattle Surge were at times. But um, I mean, the subliners also have honestly been kind of in a similar boat so far. But um, look, with Crim6 and Clayster, it's always going to be possible for this team to turn it around massively. And well, maybe they're starting on that trend. This also if makes I thought was kind of funny. Since New York are in bad shape at the moment and they play the loser of Thieves and Ultra and losers round one, it's not an ideal situation really the New York guys find themselves in. Because I mean, look, the fact of the matter is they're probably going to finish this major top 12. And then it means, okay, what do you actually do? Because what have you learned? Let's say you play Thieves or Ultra and you get body 3-1 or 3-0. Like, what have you learned there, right? Okay, you know we can't beat those teams, but right now these teams are A, S tier, whatever category you guys want to put them in. And therefore, New York don't really have any additional information, despite the fact that they kind of sucked in these online games and, of course, didn't make it through to winners as a result. If they can do something in these series, they're going to prove they actually have a chance. But, um, look, we'll see what happens. But, of course, look, Crim6 and Clayster were the two guys way back in the day alongside the complexity duo of Aix and TP that, um, well, took the team to the next level. The original, I guess, complexity dynasty before Clayster was out, surprisingly dropped for Karma right to the start of 2014. And um, well, as he says, they should actually bench Hydrant Royalty for me and TP and see what we can do. Because similarly, X and TP are the guys that can get the best out of Crim6 and Clayster. Of course, times have changed over these last several years. This also I thought was quite an interesting question here from Pac-Man. Like it kind of asks Aix and Simp gets in the replies about this as well. If Atlanta phase right now, the current team, Simp, Abizi, Selim and Arcees, played complexity right now on Black Ops 2, what's the score in a series of a best of 11? No scrims, no practice. I got Atlanta phase 6-1 thoughts he says. Aik says look 6-2 would get bored of the S&D and would just want to get rid of the respawns like wait right now in 2022. So that's the question like um, if it's prime versus prime prime complexity versus prime Atlanta phase on Black Ops 2 the game where of course they dominated like I'm um, like you're probably going to have to take complexity there but I'm um, like nowadays like literally right now if they get into a lobby on Black Ops 2 who's going to win? That's the question. Right now I feel like phase would just have their way right if Aix and the guys get back in business like with no practice at all like phase obviously very warmed up not playing the current Call of Duty they might be able to get the job done. But even then, like, do FaZe really understand anywhere near how to play the game? Like, probably it's uh, imprinted in the memories of these uh, these uh, complexity guys, exactly how to play the rotations on these maps. Like, I don't know, it's an interesting one. But uh, yeah, well, X reckons Black Ops 2, yeah, I'm gunning you. And just to finish off the video with a couple of clips here from Kenny Stream. But very much into your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button. Tell us YouTube gods, it's a good video. And I was like, you should see it as well. And I've grown the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you as always. Take care. And I will see you next time.